Therapy shouldn't be destabilizing. Something is happening. Something very physical, emotional, physiological. Many people are given medication and that's it. There's nothing else. I've known many, many people that haven't needed medication and they've come to me with very significant trauma. If something isn't working for you, don't just keep going at it more and more and more. If I'm coming into therapy, do I need to be on meds? Not if you come to see me, you don't. Hello everybody, I'm Katrina Morton. I'm a sensory motor psychotherapist. Today, I'd like to talk about something that I get asked an awful lot, and that is, can I heal from trauma without medication? But before I jump into that, if you're enjoying these videos, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, because it really helps us get our message out there to loads more of you. Now, just to be clear, this is not me bashing medication. Far from it. I know many, many people that say they could not function without the meds. That meds have made a massive difference to their life. And that is brilliant. I'm here to talk about just some aspects around medication. And this is from my experience of working with people over the years, both in the NHS, in the private clinic and in my own private practice and there's some pretty consistent things that come up. Now when I was in the NHS the psychiatrists there used to be very clear that the protocols they used that they were following were supposed to be that medications were given not as a lifetime thing and a cure-all for things, certainly not meds for mental health and particularly you know very kind of traumatized people they were supposed to be something that would level you off or stop the extremes of emotions to keep you a bit more in your window of tolerance and i've got a, another video in the window of tolerance if you want to know what exactly i'm talking about our capacity to cope if we keep going out and we can't cope whether plunging into a really deep depression or a dissociative fugue, then that's not helpful and we can't function like that. If we're going off the other end and we're really manic and we're really out of our window, terrified or really just excessively emotional, that's not great either. And so medication is designed to keep you a bit more level so things don't impact you so much and some are designed to help your mood lift. Now, the psychiatrists in the CAMS team where I worked, they were very good. We do the meds and you do the other kind of therapies. And that's the way it worked. And we worked closely with each other. And there weren't often children that were being medicated that weren't being passed to us for some kind of therapy, whether that was painting work, play therapy, talking therapy, the therapy that I did. And it was a really good kind of way of working together. That's the way it's supposed to work, but that's not the way it always works. Many people are given medication and that's it. There's nothing else. Again, for some people that works, but I'm talking about the people that that doesn't work for. That's not enough. Or it helps for a little while, and then it just comes back and our symptoms just keep coming back or even getting worse. And the problem with treating trauma with medication is trauma's hardwired into your survival system. It's going to override everything else because our need and our ability to survive, it takes over everything. It's a primal thing. And so if our nervous system's going off, we're still going to get fight, flight or freeze. We're still going to dissociate. We're still going to get whatever the symptoms of our trauma and the impact that that trauma's had going off. When I was running the clinic, I saw people coming in there and often people that arrive in a trauma clinic, they've been struggling for a while. It's not the first thing you think of. And sometimes the medications they would be taking would be astronomical really frightening amounts of medication. And these people were still dissociating. 
they were still getting triggered. They were still going into dissociative freezes for sometimes hours at a time. And for those people, just giving another medication or more of that one, less of that one, adding another one in, it didn't help. And for those people, that cocktail actually meant that they couldn't function. And it was very difficult sometimes to work out, is it because of the way that the trauma is affecting them, that it's so hard to function? Or is it a result of these massive amounts of medication? A lot of my clients have gone through coming off the meds. It can be a very difficult process. That's the other thing about being on medication for a long period of time. Some are really, really hard to come off. And some, if you miss one, they can have a really horrible impact. You know, sweats, nausea, shakes, really very quite quickly. And so those are gonna be quite hard to come off. And that in itself is a problem because it's something else that we have to deal with. So I am not a fan of just trying to numb down the symptoms with a medication, almost like fighting. You know, the poor body and the brain, they're not just doing this to make our lives difficult. I know I say that a lot, but it's true. Something is happening, something very physical, emotional, physiological. There's something definite happening. And no, we can't see it, but we can see how it affects people and oh boy, they feel it. So I'm more for if meds are gonna be used, it's in conjunction with getting some therapy. The medication in theory should make it easier to do some of the difficult work because you might be stirring things up that have lain dormant for years. In that case, medication to get you through that might be absolutely brilliant and a bit of a lifeline. But the other thing to say about that is therapy shouldn't be destabilizing. And so while medication can be great to get you through it, that doesn't mean that the therapy should be absolutely shaking you to your roots and making things you know, unmanageable. It shouldn't be like that. The first stage of any therapeutic process should be stabilization. So I'm not gonna take anybody into any content or any memories until I know that the level of dissociation, how easily they can get themselves back or I can get them back, and what things help to ground and resource. When we know that we've got tools that we can use to work with a dysregulated nervous system, then we can use those tools to ground and resource as we go through some of the stuff that's coming up. And I've worked with a lot of people with pretty significant trauma that have not used medication and have not needed medication to get through. Now, would it have been easier if they had? I don't know. But I know for some people, they really don't want to start on meds, and I get it. For some, it's like, oh my God, yes, anything that will help. Brilliant, you know? There's room in the world for both of these camps, for all of these people. And I will support anybody to do whichever way they want to do it. With people that are not on any medication, they might need to work a little bit harder at home to practice their resources, to really use them, to keep themselves grounded, not just do them in the session when they're with me. But I've known many, many people that haven't needed medication and they've come to me with very significant trauma and I've got them through it. They're living a much more functional life and they've not had to come off their medication. So like I say, this is not a medication bashing, but it's something that I get asked an awful lot. And if I'm coming into therapy, do I need to be on meds? Not if you come to see me, you don't. For some people that I see, they have self-medicated using a whole range of things. Now that can be very problematic, cause problems of its own, and really not healthy. And if there's a choice, I would rather that person was gonna go on a prescription medication. 
to take the place of having to do this. For other people, that kind of self-medication can look like Tai Chi, yoga, gong bath therapy, music therapy, sound therapy, all kinds of different things, equine therapy, you know, kinesiology, craniosacral work that can be really, really good and helpful and play a major part, not just, you know, something for maintenance, but really play a major part in their whole trauma recovery. And again, like I say, I will support people going down whatever path they need to be in. I will liaise and work with whoever else is working with my clients so that we get the best possible package of care and everybody is working in the same direction and knowing what they're doing to get these people better. So just to reiterate, whichever path you choose to take, then if that works for you, that is brilliant. There's never one size fits all. And if that applies to therapy, it applies to everything else as well. Find the things that really work for you. But if something isn't working for you, don't just keep going at it more and more and more. Try something else. Try something else alongside it and see if it helps, see if it works for you. So to answer my initial question, can you heal from trauma without medication? My answer is yes, you definitely can. And it's not only possible, it's extremely doable. If you want to go down that path, then 100%. It's finding the right therapist that knows exactly what they're doing, that's gonna help you get through this. Sometimes the relationship with, between therapist and a client, that can be incredibly healing. That in itself can, you know, really heal old wounds, have new present moment experiences, give things that weren't there growing up, but always in a very healthy and boundaried way, of course. So I hope that helps make sense of things and gives you some food for thought. And if you've got any questions about working with trauma, going into therapy and not on medication, then drop them in the comments. And if you've got anything to share about how you've gone about this, what your experience has been like, whatever options that you've taken, then please put them in because people really like to hear about these things. The more we share, the better it is for everyone. So if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe to our channel. I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.